Okay, we are back. We have a very special treat in store for you tonight, folks. My first guest this evening left the world in awe this past Monday when she wowed viewers and judges alike on the hit NBC series, The Voice. We are elated to welcome to the show tonight one of the most remarkable live performers you will ever see on any stage, Chicago's very own Teresa Griffin. Sometimes 
Therese, I think I figured out what the voice of an angel really sounds like right there. My goodness, that was an amazing performance. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank um, you so much. When we heard you were coming on the show, we were absolutely just ecstatic. Uh, Monday night, you thrilled the world on The Voice. Tell us what these last 24, 48 hours have been like for you. I've been Twittering, Facebooking, Twittering, Facebooking, <laughs> websiting, answering the phone, answering the other phone. It's been, it's been a roller coaster and it's been great. Yeah. And all of Chicago is behind you. And I know we need people to go online, right? You need to go online, download the song, and make sure you rate the song and write a review. Because adult artists, you know, they just think we don't sell. And I just say it's because you don't give us anything to buy. There you go. You know, the, um, the only thing stopping me right now from going online to do that is that I'm interviewing you. Yes, so yes. Soon as, soon as Don't I'm leave. Done, then I'm going to go and go and do that. You know, my, my favorite thing is when I, when I hear about people talk of your success, they refer to it, you know, an overnight success. Here you are, you burst onto the scene. There's nothing overnight about this journey you've had. Tell folks your past and where you've come from. I'm originally from Monroe, Louisiana. And I, I came to Chicago like 18 years ago. I've sang back up for um, my mentor, Jerry Iceman Butler, for like the last 18 years, because I met him right after I got here. And um, gosh, I had to like get gigs in the clubs. And I actually worked with two bands sometimes and went from one club to the other club. Um, so I would work two gigs at a time and that was like, vocal aerobics, you know, and, <laughs> <laughs> and running dudes. and paying a driver to hurry up and get, and you really don't have like any money or whatever. So it, that was, you know, when I look back on it, it was like, yeah, I was young and crazy. And that part was fun. I, I don't have a lot of regrets with that. Um, it's just been a lot, I mean, but it has allowed me to help a lot of kids through my foundation, Better Love Yourself. And that was one thing that I actually wish they had mentioned last night because I think everybody thinks I'm like this really, really crazy person, even though I am, but there's, there's also, you know, that side of me that loves to give back and I have an organization called Better Love Yourself and we give foot lockers with comforter sheets, towels, backpacks, all this stuff for kids to go off to college. And I've been doing that for six years. This is our seventh year we're going into and I'm proud of that. That as is well. fantastic. Yeah. Do you, do you have a website for the organization? The website is even called Better Love Yourself, uh, betterloveyourself.com. So your kids go on, we give it to first time college students and you know, because it's that, it's that package that they need the first time they go off to college, you know, and it's to remind them, their foot locker is there to remind them to love themselves. And most of the things that are in there are, is that type of reminder, you know. Wrap up in your comforter, comforter love yourself. Right, you know? right. Speaking of love, there's no shortage of love being directed your way from all the fans <laughs> you've made since uh, turning up on The Voice. How, how did that come about? Did, was it something you just decided to pursue? Did friends and family encourage you to do this? Oh my God, for two years, the last two years that the show's been on, because it's going into its third season, the first season people said, why didn't you audition for The Voice? And I was like, what is that? And, <laughs> and then when they said, you know, you should audition next season, which was the second season. I said, no, I don't want to do that. You know, I'm happy. And um, one of the engineers that I actually record at this particular studio, Pressure Point, and he said, Teresa, I'm going to send your stuff in. And, and Steve did. And he got me a producer um, interview. I did not stand in line. And, um, you know, I, I, I was really reluctant to do it. So even though I look like this really wild person, uh, that's just the other Teresa that walks on stage with her ego. The, you know, that's, that's that. But I really, I didn't think that I wanted to do it. And then I got there and I met these really wonderful artists and it allowed me to think second about it because there were artists there. There were a lot of artists that tried out for this show. And I'm an artist, so you know, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. And you know, the, the, the more you advance before even the chairs turn around, because it's a lot of auditions, the more you want to be on there. So that last big audition is when they turn the chairs around. And for somebody to have their back to you, you know, that's nerve wracking when really what you do is you draw people in with your spirit and, and your, you know, your stage presence. And that's what you're hoping that sells you. 
but instead they turn around because of your voice. And I thought, I could take that because I'm chunky, but I'm curvy. I'm cute, but I'm older. So what the hell, you know? They don't know anything. <laughs> they can't even see me, yay! You're, you're the finest cougar I've ever seen. How's there you that? go, boo! Um, <laughs> you go, girl. Hi. I just wanted to say that on my show. Um, <laughs> you know, and you talk about being an artist. Your professionalism and your commitment to your craft really came out in the part where, you know, you had to figure out who you were going to go with there. And, you know, everyone's talking about, is it going to be Blake? Is it going to be Christina Aguilera? What was, what was the defining issue for you? Well, every artist thinks about it going in. And I was like, God, you know, first you just want a chair to turn. Ugh. Yeah. And then it's, ooh. What if, what if? <laughs> and the defining thing for me, I'm a huge Christina Aguilera fan. I wanted to leave it as that. I didn't want to go to her team and have her hate me, or I didn't want her to diss me. I, I couldn't have taken it. And so Blake was literally telling her to turn around. And I just thought that maybe he heard something that she didn't, that he would be more willing and more open, you know? And so that was it for me, the fact that he was telling her what to do. And I'm like, you know, if I was in the studio and a producer was sitting there, I'd have to go with the one that was confident enough to hear what needed to happen. Absolutely, that's, a smart, that's a smart move on your part. That's, that's remarkable. Um, I also want to ask you, a lot of fans might be surprised to learn what the environment is like backstage at The Voice. Uh, tell us about that. I have to say I fell in love with the crew. I fell in love with all of the people behind the scenes. Maybe not wardrobe, but everybody <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> uh, Well, you know, I, I, I'm an older lady who likes to dress my curves and maybe not, you know, on an everyday basis, but, um, but um, obviously I was toned down a bit. <laughs> but I have to say behind the stage, I just fell in love with all of them and I miss them you know, when I'm away from them. I, that's what I, you know, I, when I'm away from them, I miss them because they are so professional and they're so supportive and so very wonderful. And to, to have that, you know, that's, that's amazing because they're all wanting you to, you know, get to the next level. Yeah, they want you to succeed. They're rooting yes. for you. It's like yeah. kind of a, a family type thing. Yeah. That's great. One of the things I read about you, you have a passion for interior design. Is that, <laughs> yes. is that, is that correct? It's very correct. Because see, what I was thinking <laughs> is, after you win The Voice, you could do like Design Star on HGTV. <laughs> have you thought about? I would love to do Design Star. You have no idea. I'm the kind of girl, even though I look girly, I will roll up my sleeves and put my overalls on, and I like to put a floor in. So, you know, I, I like things to look beautiful and put together. And I'm Southern still, even though I live in Chicago, I'm still a Southern girl. So I like putting things together and make, you know, that after effect that happens. I, I like making people happy when you're putting things together and it, and it all comes to, oh my God, it's, it's sometimes as nice as making music. Well, with regard to your career, everything is, is coming together. And I want to mention again, uh, for more information, go to NBC.com slash The Voice. Uh, yeah. Check out Teresa Griffin. Also, be sure to follow her on Twitter. At, Twitter, at Teresa Griffin. Teresa Griffin. At, at Teresa, Teresa Griffin. Griffin, yes. Okay. And let them know, my name is spelled a little weird, so it's, it's T-E-R-I-S-A, yeah. I had to put a little something extra in there. I was special as a child. Oh, you don't, need to <laughs> you don't need to change the spelling of your name to just be as remarkable as you are. You're an incredible person. I'm in right? love with you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! This, this is where, we, this is where we, dim, we dim the lights and we go away. Um, thank you so much for thank coming you. on our show. Thank Best you. of luck to you. I think I speak for everyone here when I say we are rooting for you. And will you come back on the show after you win the whole shebang? You know, I'm going to come back and we're going to have a ball. Maybe I can get you up there to sing with me. <laughs> my, um, my, my wife would prefer if you were to come over and maybe like redesign our, our bedroom. Tell her I got her. I got her back. Okay, you got her back. <laughs> Wonderful. Big hand for Teresa Griffin, ladies and gentlemen. You are a delight. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You.